Well, welcome to the dig in session with Emba. We're excited to have you here. We're going to talk about how the International Mountain Bicycling Association built a system in Drupal 9 with Civisurum for peer to peer fundraising and campaign to support trails all across the country. So, you're here and you should care about this because I think that this is a great example of a project that really does have it all. It, it was a big enough project that there was a good discovery phase, there's lots of different people at the table who needed to be involved, um, there's lots of money involved, this is a very physical job of shovels, building trail, <laughs> impacting and benefiting local communities and the infrastructure of local communities, and there's really good tech. There's both the use of a little bit of custom development, lots of contributed models, so creative and strategic site building, um, all to have a system that's really been running solid with no issues, minimal issues since 2020. So this is not a recent build, it's been upgraded into Drupal 9, it was in Drupal 8, and that's a success, that, that there's been that stability in the growth and the time, and is why you are here and why you should care and be excited. Okay, hi all, um, my name is Leah Worley, I am the Digital Projects Coordinator at the International Mountain Biking Association. Um, we call it IMBA for short, that's all. Really long name. Um, <laughs> I work interdepartmentally uh, with IMBA, and then I basically coordinate and manage all of our projects in the digital atmosphere. A little bit more about IMBA. Um, our mission is to create, enhance, and protect great places to ride mountain bikes. Um, our current focus right now is more trails close to home. Our goal is to grow the quality and quantity of trails um, throughout the United States. <clears throat> so that basically everyone has more trails close to home and iconic backcountry experiences. We've been the world leader since 1988 and are the only organization focused in entirely on trails and access for all types of mountain bikers. Um, so we teach low impact riding, grassroots advocacy, sustainable trail design, and um, we love cooperation among all user groups. <clears throat> we are a national network of 280 local chapters and affiliates. We have about uh, 300, uh, 3,000, 3, 36,000, woof, yeah. <laughs> 36,000 member base um, that is comprised of individual mountain bike riders and passionate volunteers. And I'm Jenna Dillette, and I work with Square, and I like to say about myself that I love people and I happen to work with software, and that's really been, been my journey, and I work with Square, as I mentioned. We're open source software champions, so we've been in the Drupal space as an agency since 2008. We also work with a lot of CRM systems, and so we're very much, I think, a back-end shop. We do front-end too, but we spend the most of our time with our clients um, supporting them with their membership structure, donations, event management, email campaigns, and because it's hand in glove, integrated systems, how do those systems work together? How can we help improve the processes of the team members that are in these systems day in, day out? So over the course of the years since we started, since 2008, we've also, 10 years ago, then started into hosting. We have our own mail server, and so we're a long-term technology partner to the organizations that we work with, which one happens to be IMBA, which we're excited to present together today. All right, let's get in to dig in. Um, dig in is a peer-to-peer -peer crowdsourcing software that was built by Square on imba.com in 2019. We launched it in 2020, and it was made possible by our founding partner, Shimano. Um, we've been, our first ever dig in campaign was in 2020, like I said, and we've been hosting the campaigns uh, year round since launch. We found great success with this platform. Diggin truly bridges the gap between national and local fundraising efforts. The Diggin program is for our not-for-profit local partners, uh, so IMBA chapters and local affiliates. Uh, we recognize that all trails are local and we built this platform to give mountain bikers a way to support projects in their own backyard and at the national level. So we host an application period every quarter where local leaders are encouraged to apply with a spe specific project in mind. We consider various types of projects. Some include uh, projects on public lands that are free and open, 
to public users. Um, that's with mountain bikers as the primary user group. <coughs> we also uh, consider projects that are, result in a visible and sustainable increase in access, improve mountain bike experiences, and uh, generally provide a greater community benefit. Lastly, we consider projects that promote community development, youth riding, new rider engagement, and engagement with marginalized communities. Some examples of projects that have completed a round of dig in are the Central Michigan Mountain Biking uh, Association. They needed new, tro new tools for trail building. We also um, worked with B Street Jumps in Southern Oregon to improve local built bike jumps. <coughs> Another example right at the end there is in central Iowa, and they wanted to integrate trail and green space. So the Dig In platform displays a full listing of current projects as well as individual project pages. The individual projects pages um, include a story about the project itself and a donate link. Communities are encouraged to get involved in raising funds and Diggin is often referred to as a Kickstarter for, tra uh, for trail building. <clears throat> IMBA collaborates with partners to put as much money as possible to local trail efforts. Our ongoing partnership has direct benefit for local communities. No matter what, the first $2,000 that's been raised on our Diggin platform is matched uh, by Shimano for the project. get into some statistics after. Um, so we launched the project in 2020. We've had five rounds of dig-in so far. That's with 52 completed and uh, approved projects. We've had nearly 1,400 donors give over uh, $190,000, resulting in a $77,000 corporate matching support. What's really astonishing is the impact uh, that projects have had um, with Diggin have gone on to leverage $895,000 in additional support for trails. So this is just a little graph of Diggin quarter after quarter for the five quarters that we've hosted it. As you can see, $25,000 has been raised in online donations for each round. Um, Distributions to most chapters has been even higher due to that corporate match. Um, we can kind of see like how important community fundraising efforts are and they truly are what makes Dig In so successful. So rather than list all the projects, because that would be long and boring, um, this is a interactive map that displays all IMBA local chapters that have received Dig In funding. As you can see, projects actually follow a mountain range, the Appalachian Mountain <laughs> Range. Sprinkles of projects are in the Midwest and West. Our next application period starts in, on May 1 with projects going live in June. So let's get into the technology and how we built it out. Yeah, so how did we do this? Um, which I think what I want to point out and we'll hopefully remember is this is one use case of the same tool set, which is the beauty of Drupal, right? It's just a pile of Legos in a little pile and you get to put them together in a different way this way. And so I think that there's a lot that we're going to show that could apply depending on what kind of organization you're with. Maybe it's a grant application for that's not for public display. Maybe it's case management. Uh, maybe it's some sort of other application process and the way that's managed and displayed. And because it, there's the CRM integration component that really opens the door of capabilities, and this is just one use case, of course, a case study, but there's lots of ways that the same model could be applied. So looking at the technologies we used, basically use this. We used Drupal, and we used Civi CRM, like I mentioned. We used Drupal WebForm. We used WebForm Civi CRM, and Civi CRM Entity and Drupal Views, and that's 
that's what we used um, to build this. I think there's one, one little custom related to views, but otherwise everything I think is strategic site building and some theming. One of the things we considered was the web form content creator Drupal module, where you can have a web form submission and that automatically creates content. Then you could have content moderation. We went down that path when we were in the discovery process. We ended up not using that, but just thinking about other tools that are out there that could achieve a similar variation to what we built here. I do want to touch on, we are at DrupalCon, so I wanted to touch on what is Civi Serum since it is a piece of this project. You could have a similar project and have a completely different CRM system that would still work with this and have the same model, but in the case of this, is a good opportunity and plug for another fantastic open source project out there, which is Civi Serum. And it has all of these features. You can read the bullet points for yourself as far as what it can manage, and it's what um, IMBA and many organizations rely on, and it's hand in glove with Drupal. And so it lives with Drupal. It can't live on its own. It lives with a CMS system. You can see that it lives with Drupal, WordPress, Backdrop, and Joomla are the CMSs that it can live with. So how we use uh, Civi CRM, it's basically our house. Uh, we configured Civi CRM to fit our needs. Um, most of the functionality is out of the box features as well as contributed extensions. We primarily use it for memberships, donation management, event management, email marketing, tracking corporate support, <laughs> campaign management, and most importantly is revenue sharing, which we will get into in a little bit. Yeah, so this is our leader dashboard. Um, it's unique to IMBA. Uh, it's a custom Drupal model that leverages Civi CRM data um, for our local chapters and affiliates. It's essentially a CRM for individual chapters. Um, <clears throat> so chapters can manage uh, current and expired memberships. They can track their donations and contributions. Uh, they have access to IMBA provided resources. They can send mailings to their members and they can apply to programs like Digin. Yeah, so looking at what we wanted to do with this project is that what you're seeing here is the application within the, chap the leader dashboard that any chapter leader across the country of the over 300 chapters of IMBA would log into. It's on the website, it's all integrated in one place. This is where they can go and see all the memberships that they have, the statuses of those memberships, run reports, send mailings because of those statuses. With the Diggin project, we needed to integrate that in the same place that they were already used to going. Keep everybody centralized and taking action where they're already taking action, where they're already going for information. And so thinking about that application process, they should be able to view previous submissions that they have from other campaign periods or request a change to an application. All of that is within the same user interface that they have to do all their reporting and the actions that they can take, which is a significant value offering that IMBA provides by being a chapter of IMBA. You can easily be a, a bike club, a mountain bike organization. That does not mean that you're an IMBA affiliated organization. And so that technology offering that IMBA provides to the chapters, which is administered through this dashboard, which is all Drupal and a Drupal module that happens to display um, Civi Serum data because it's all within the one integrated system, um, is a powerful offering and having dig in that project embedded within the offering expands the capacity and that value offer that Ember provides to all the chapters. So the application features in general, we should have these application desires whenever we're filling out anything online. Can I save it as a draft? If you're going to ask me a bunch of questions, I don't want to have to know all that right now. Or I need to be able to know all the questions to be able to collect that information so I come prepared. Um, it updates contacts automatically because it's directly um, interfaced with Civi CRM. Then it updates or creates new contacts. And so with those contacts come relationships. So I'm a land manager of. I am the executive director of. So then IMBA can view and track and create groups and run searches based on relationships that exist and track the engagement of those individuals over time that they may be part of multiple um, campaigns or multiple organizations that IMBA is working with. If you know Webform, Drupal Webform is super powerful, easy to use with some training of conditional logic, validation rules, all of that applies to keep an application process only asking the questions that it needs to once information is filled in provide more questions or more clarifying information. And all of that is, is site building, right? That's configuration. There's no custom there. It's just building a smart web form in the integrations. 
So this is the web form, right? This looks like a web form. You can see in the key, you see this little thing, Civi CRM. That's because those are Civi CRM elements. And so if we look on the next slide, we'll see what that looks like. With the integration of Drupal with Civi CRM, there's this nice little checkbox of, do you want to enable Civi CRM processing? Yes, check the box. And then what that does is allow you to select through this UI what fields of Civi CRM do you want to have as part of the form. Those become then web form elements that then you can manipulate and control and have logic and everything that you would with a normal web form component. So in this case, you can see along the left-hand side, we have up to five contacts that the web form submission automatically creates or updates upon web form submission. And from this UI, we can decide which fields are being collected. Um, even if I want to collect, say, multiple mailing addresses, this one is a billing, this one is main, for example of different address types, which depending on the CRM structure you have, those differences can be very valuable. <laughs> Don't send mail to this one, send it to this one instead. The other powerful thing that the integration with Drupal Web Form, so it's Drupal Web Form, and then the other module is Web Form Civi CRM. There's a training tomorrow that's happening, I think at 11 a.m. that Karen Gerritsen is leading um, that goes deeper into Drupal Web Form and all of the power and options related to integration with CRM. The other great thing um, about Civi CRM in this project is the concept of an activity. So in Civi CRM, there's um, different activity types. You can have custom activity types. We can see upon this Drupal Web Form submission that automatically creates an activity type of dig in, and then it both assigns and adds participants of that activity. And so that's part of that ongoing management where Imba's team only has to change one thing on contact records, and then we'll see later on with examples of some views within the system, how that then automatically, because of site building, updates what the active projects are to front-end visitors to the website. So going in a little deeper into Drupal views, um, the, what we used heavily, because a lot of the data itself is coming from Civi CRM, is the Civi CRM entity module. And what's great about that is that people can develop in a CRM the Drupal way. <laughs> because with Civi CRM Entity, it basically allows a lot of that Civi CRM data, whether that's contact information, address, event participation, membership, all of those data points can become true Drupal entities. And then you have the beautiful collection of all contributed modules and tools that are available for development that then can be done the Drupal way. And so that's a beautiful thing about at Square of getting to do that work that we have our Drupal developers. We do a lot of work with Civi CRM, but we can do that work using the Drupal skill set, the Drupal tooling that is robust and maintained by such a large community that's much bigger than the Civi CRM community. So kind of the best of both worlds. So just want to highlight that as far as DrupalCon <laughs> and still being able to develop with CRM data in an integrated system, doing it the Drupal way and taking advantage of tools that exist. So this is an example of a view. This is what it looks like on the front end. You know, we're pulling in the title. We're saying it's a project of what. That's populating the name of the chapter. We're having a calculation that is dynamically saying how much has been raised so far out of the total and then the description and ability to view more details. Here's what that looks like. You can see from the filter, filter criteria, it's looking for specific activities based on that activity type that we talked about earlier, and also the status of that activity. So all the EMBA team has to do is change the activity status, and then that's what triggers and has the information show. Otherwise, all these fields that are displaying, such as the funding goal, the location, um, the description, who the land manager is, all of that data is coming from that initial Drupal web form submission. And so there's no take a paper application or take an online Google form application and then somehow manually or import or bring it over. Once that application is approved, the data is there. They just decide on the overall status of the application approval. And then with this, those projects can automatically show up on the website. So very little management is needed. And also it's site building, right? We've got a web form <laughs> and a view so far that is, that is doing this work. So learning more, this is kind of that landing page. This was on a previous slide. We've got the photo that again was part of an upload that's in the initial web form of the application and the ability to donate. And you can see the calculated total that displays above so people can know the standing at any given time, how much is being raised and what their impact will make. 
So the donation page is critical. When we thought about the way to do it, then everything points to one form, one form, rule them all. So if any changes need to be made in the future, there's just one place that we need to do that. And so what we're using here is um, taking advantage of CiviSerum campaigns, which is a kind of a component um, within the CiviSerum system that's just out of the box, a contribution page, and then reporting, which you'll see a few examples of. So this is a donation form, which you would expect. It's very simple. You select the amount you want to give or the, you enter the amount that you want to give if that's not in the option list. And then you enter your information. And there's a little, my donation will support. And this is where we're having it automatically um, calculate and go to the specific chapter based on what the campaign was for. So if we look at the URL anatomy of that, then you can see how it's broken down. I copied it so you can look at it more easily <laughs> than I can describe of which pieces of the URL component are pointing to what within the system and how that breaks down. So the um, photo at the bottom is just that basic profile. So in a sense, when you set up a contribution form, in many systems, you're, you're specifying what are the fields that you want to collect about the donor, right? So you could add more fields. In this example, this is the, the form and this is all the information that's being collected. The would you like your donation to be anonymous, that's important because that's related to the chapter reporting. If I'm a donor and I don't want you to know I just gave $10,000 because I was generous and I don't need you to follow up with me about that, I'm gonna make myself anonymous. They can still see that they got 10,000. They don't ever get to trace that to me. But IMBA needs to know, right? So there's some accounting, so, rec so receipts can be given. But that doesn't mean that the chapter gets that information. So that information is critical related to when we think back to the leader dashboard and that UI where chapter leaders are going and managing their information, downloading information, having their own marketing strategies for how they follow up, then that's, that's the information that they need to only follow up with those people who have given them permission to follow up. Yeah, so let's get into revenue sharing. This is easily probably one of the most important things about this project. Um, our revenue sharing reports are as straightforward as possible. Uh, for dig in, we bundle the report by campaign round. We can easily see how much the project has made um, in online donations, and then we can also see our 10% retainer for each project. We can also see the uh, $2,000 in corporate matching support if they reach that amount, as well as the total to uh, distribute to each project. It's straightforward, it's easy, it's important to keep our finance team happy and out of the weeds. Um, and just by retaining that 10% in total donations, we'll be recouping the initial investment uh, this year. And I wanna add, that was an important piece in the initial scoping of, um, and we'll get into that later too, but thinking there are a lot of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising platforms already out there, so why reinvent something and put it in a Drupal site when you, you have so many other options? And so looking at the math of what the project was gonna take, but also what EMBA gets paid back, and the other benefit of keeping donors, keeping chapters all within one place, there's a lot of added value of what else EMBA can do and teach and show and do shout outs for by having the audience kept within the site that has maybe not always a direct financial value, but I think of that as the long game. <laughs> and so there's a, there's a lot of um, intangible separate from just the dollars amount of having the investment done in the system and also being able to track, because it is dollars, to know when it's paying back for itself, then then absolutely makes it worth it and beyond the t intangibles. So the chapter reporting, this is back in the leader dashboard like we've seen. So we're still um, in the kind of that dig in area of the system. So at any given time, a chapter leader can log in via Imba's website of imba.com slash user and can log in, go to their dashboard, which shows their chapter's information, see their membership, and also if they have an active campaign, see all of the donations that are, are being made on behalf. The way that shows up from a financial perspective is that though those chapters are soft credited on the contribution for the way um, that reporting happens within the CRM system. And then they can see the individual names and emails, which we have blocked out for privacy, <laughs> the, the zip code, the amount that was given, and you can see the ability to download that amount in addition to the summary of how much do they get to take home automatically, what is the match for that, 
And that's the big batch. Before I was on kind of the tech agency side of the table, um, I did, I worked in fundraising for a human service organization and endowment building. And I know from writing a lot of grants that it's projects like this that end up being the matching dollars for even another funding source. When you're doing physical projects like trail building, it is the combination of so many sources that make something possible, so many different partnerships. And that can be the same thing in very different models for very different organizations that are likely represented in this room. Um, and I think that the creative use of, of site building with a little bit of customs, that's the, that's the power and beauty of what can an agency do. If you know the tools really well, you can know what you can get with lower effort. And then that additional effort is very specific in what it's going to achieve. And I think that, that this has been a good project for that. And a really easy, straightforward UI for chapters to pull real-time information and download and take action further external to the system to grow their impact. All right, let's get into a little bit of our marketing channels. Um, so part of what makes Diggin so successful is um, due to our great marketing around each campaign. Um, some of the ways we market for Dig In is through targeted email based on locations. Uh, we email our members um, within like a 75 to 50 mile radius of each project. We also deploy mass emails to our entire member base um, uh, just about Dig In as a whole and when it's opening up. We send emails to our local leaders to let them know that an application is soon to be opening. Uh, we promote individual projects via social channels, primarily Instagram and Facebook. Uh, they're actually our leading referral every every time we host it again. <laughs> so, um, digging pages are built with that cam campaign specific URL, and that actually pulls in project metadata. So it's great for individual sharing as well. <clears throat> so search in Civi CRM is a great tool that we utilize um, for basically actions based on data results. We create smart groups. Uh, it's essentially a saved search. Uh, we use basic groups for mailings. We do bulk updates in uh, Civi CRM search. And then we also export the donor list for comparisons. So donor logs are really useful for both us and our local partners. Uh, Personalized thank yous go a long way in nonprofit fundraising. Uh, this is actually how we learned a pro mountain biker donated to dig in, and we actually ended up reaching out to him, and he did a promo for us and for his local trail. So, yeah. Yeah, the other thing I want to add about um, separate from Civic CRM is just a way to gauge CRM power in general is um, how many steps are there between getting the results you want and being able to take action on those results. And so I think as a gauge of any CRM system or even when you're looking at strategies of building out something on your website, what are the steps taken between the results you want and the actions you want to take? And ideally, there's as few steps as possible. And so that was something that we looked at too, knowing that that'll be the success of the project. How quickly can the IMPA team be able to find and then update, find, and modify, find and do anything related to the data with this, and we wanted to keep those steps as short as possible. Uh, so <laughs> this is uh, basically how we send out mailings via Civi CRM. Um, we basically just use generalized tokens. We also have quite a few custom tokens um, that are uh, basically chapter name, chapter URLs, stuff like that. Um, our mailings are generated through Civi CRM core, and then we also provide the same interface in our CLD, our leader dashboard, so that um, chapters can send mailings about dig in directly to their members. So we want to talk about the process a little bit, which gets into how our projects like this run, because it's a really good reminder, and especially having a couple years since it was launched to be able to reflect back and look at other projects that we've done together, whether that's with EMBA or with other organizations, to have a reminder for ourselves and everyone here at DrupalCon as far as what, um, what led, leads to success or what would lead to better success in the future if we were to do this again. So the first thing I want to talk about is people. 
Um, and that should be no surprise since I like people and happen to work with <laughs> software. Uh, one thing that I've always been really impressed at at IMBA is the way that they, I think, very smartly engaged their um, board leadership. And so in this project, we actually had a couple liaisons from the um, IMBA board of directors who are also chapter leaders of their local mountain biking club that had a very unique perspective. They'd been involved with the organization for a long time. They had a vested interest in their local community for this to be successful and how they would raise funds and expand the effort of their local initiatives and also inform and work with a technology partner. Being on a call with a technology vendor is not often the case um, and shouldn't often be the case for board members, but I think for unique projects, um, unique involvement is critical. And so the, the important thing of having a lot of people around the table sets clear expectations from the very beginning. One thing I want to celebrate is the surprise that Leah was not involved in the original project and is not involved in the maintenance of the system. And that is a success because that shows that after, since 2020, it hasn't needed to be maintained beyond the security updates that may impact it or have to be tested again. And that a good system is built when it doesn't have to be taught extensively to someone, when it's easy to pick up and clear to know what needs to be done. And that a key to that is documentation, which we'll get to. So having the right people doesn't mean that it always has to be that person. It's having the right people in positions, knowing that people change, but the system needs to live out whoever is in a specific role because people change jobs. The next piece to point out is having a clear discovery process, having things thought through with due diligence, understanding those expectations and having that in writing and going through the full workflow before anything begins, kind of hailing back to the old grant writing hat. It was really important for our team to understand the expectations from a reporting standpoint of Shimano or any of the other corporate supporters that EMBA has. That way, if they need data, we need to make sure that that data is being collected in some way and is reportable in some way by EMBA rather than finding out after lunch, oh, you need to send what kind of report for who? <laughs> I guess we should figure out how we're gonna pull that together. So putting all of that on the table of um, even reporting requirements to funders, that very much impacts the technical implementation. And that may not be solved with code, but that's absolutely a critical question that needs to be included in from the very beginning. The next is roles and accountability, the, the old tagline of having the right people on the bus and also in the right seat. I think that was important from a testing perspective um, the, of who was going to do what, what was the Square team going to do, what was IMBA going to do. At Square, we support organizations who have all levels of technical ability. That may, may mean that for some organizations, we do things that we don't technically have to do, that with a little bit of training, they could do themselves, um, which means that it's always a choice or can be a choice of who is doing what. And I think as far as due diligence for organizations, to make sure that they can own and do what they can own. That's something that is good to ask and remind um, a technology partner. That's which is like a little rabbit trail, which Leah knows I like to go down. Um, but as far as accountability and being able to do and own what you can do as an organization instead of having things kind of hidden behind a curtain of, well, that's technical, we'll do it. It might not actually be that technical or technical at all. And sharing that work can also help share and, and lower the cost. And so um, having those honest conversations and um, questions with your technology partner then directly affects that time spent report, which directly affects budgets. I mentioned documentation before, and that's really been the thing that has kept this a really well-oiled machine, smooth sailing ship. We had very clear written instructions with, with um, screenshots of what needed to be done at every quarter. And so this is quarterly, so there's one update that needs to happen on the web form once a quarter. The campaign period needs to change instead of quarter four, 2021, quarter one, 2022, changing the quarter, and then also bulk updating all of the previous applications that were already submitted. And so it's really three main actions that the team needs to take with clear screenshots. And once that documentation was developed, um, then the team has been able to follow it. Another really simple thing that has been very valuable is within the Simps system, there's a Drupal content type called documentation. <laughs> and based on permissions, only Imba staff can see it. And so not only is it a place that they can put their own SOPs for whatever sort of technical function or reporting or content management um, 
workflow that they want to have for everybody. It's also the place that our team puts documentation. That way, if we ever have some sort of bad breakup, which I don't expect, it's not like documentation and training resources are living with us. We think that it makes a lot of sense for training materials to live within the content management system that it's about. And having that centralized and using Drupal as a content management system to also manage documentation, you've got tagging, you've got beautiful vills to, views to have filters of, of resources. And then um, having that tied into when new staff are onboarded into IMBA makes it that much easier to know where things are and stuff doesn't get lost in emails or Google folders or wherever stuff often ends up. <laughs> and so having that clear plan and having documentation for this project live within the documentation architecture of how we have all the other SOPs that we develop as well as the SOPs that IMBA develops for their own purposes that may have nothing to do with the way we work with them has also been a, a key to success that this utilized but is used across the board with other things they do. And then marketing, I think um, a lesson learned the hard way is that sometimes on the agency side, if we're focused so much on the technical, what's going to be implemented, does that work right? Does it look good in, in all screen sizes? Then one question that we have not always asked is, how is this going to be launched? Do you have a communication plan? Because so much of that acceptance of the end user base, depending on how much of a change the new technology represents, that has its own life and can affect the technical project in unintended and interesting ways. And so I think I've learned the hard way to realize that we need to support and partner and make sure that there's a communication plan and strategy so when this is launched, have there been communications that have timed out in enough advance that people know what's coming and how they can interact with it and take advantage, and then that's really a success. It can work great to everybody else, but if no one knows what it's supposed to do or that it's new or that it was coming, those kind of rifts can take a beautiful technical project and it might not be as well received as you were hoping. Unfortunately, that was not at all the case with them, but because we did think about that from the beginning of what, what is a communication plan. Yeah, so dig in continues to evolve. Originally, it was a lot of hands-on work for someone who is in my position, but now it's a well-oiled platform, and I am completely hands-off when it comes to running dig in. Um, you know, Diggin has provided a platform for local leaders to bring trail and mountain bike um, projects to life. Uh, we collaborate with our industry partners and have successfully like accelerated uh, the pace of trail building across the country. Um, we really bring in, bring together the bike industry and local communities to make all these fundraising efforts a reality. Um, that's dig in. Yeah, so reach out to us, contact us if you have questions. Um, again, I want to reiterate the, the power of a good partner is knowing the tools well enough to know what you can start from and what you can start with. And I think um, that's one of the things I'm most proud of with this project is that our team knew the tools that existed, which meant for a very straightforward, after all the discovery is done, as far as what implementation looked like, it's really fairly simple tech. <laughs> and it, it had has had a significant impact. And there's so many use cases related to, I think, applications of any kind. Anytime you have a form online, you want people to enter information, you want to share that information back with them or with others in some way. You want to have that tied into a CRM system. It doesn't have to be Civi CRM. Drupal is such a powerful tool for that. And that does not mean that you have to have an experienced developer do the work. A lot of that is knowing what the system is capable of and really good business analysis. And I think that this is a, a great showcase for that. So would love to have conversations afterwards or follow up later. We do have several minutes. So if anybody has questions or follow up on any of this, we'd be happy to answer. Yeah, question in the back. They are anonymous. That was critical to lower any sort of barrier at all. <laughs> oh, so you mean, um, I was thinking, so the donors, so that give to campaigns on the donation form, those are all anonymous. As far as the ability to submit a dig in application, that is absolutely authenticated. That's only allowed for um, IMBA chapters, and so it can't just be any organization. That's why it's through that leader dashboard, which is um, very much a, a permissioned 
authenticated space where you have to have um, even a specific leadership within the chapter in order to access that space since it has all that personal information of members, contribution history of members, and also the UI in order to submit an application to be considered a dig-in project. Yeah, that would be a, <laughs> that would be quite the vetting process. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, so you. <laughs> Heck yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so most of our chapters have their own websites. So whenever they're looking at Google Analytics or anything like that, they're looking at their own Google Analytics. As far as our leader dashboard, I believe they do have access to mailing reports. So click through summaries, um, link clicks, everything like that, uh, amount of opens, views, stuff like that, they do have access to within our leader dashboard. No, we generally do not share that information. Right here. How are you doing with payment processing? Um, their team uses Braintree as a payment processor, so that allows for either payment by credit card or PayPal. Yes, that is hosted. So as part of um, core Civi CRM, then it, you can set up with all of the major payment processors, so Stripe, PayPal, Authorize.net, name many others, and uh, Braintree being one of those. And so that's configured, um, those settings for what the payment processor in is configured within Civi CRM, and so that's automatically, you, you never leave the website. Um, you enter in your credit card information, click Submit, and are redirected to whatever page Imbo wants you to be on after you um, submit the contribution, but it's all within one system, that hand and glove of Civi and Drupal living together. Right here. I mean, it was like, was it 2012? I mean, it, it was a choice of the organization so long ago. Um, we started working together, Square started working with IMBA in um, 2018, I almost 18. said eight, <laughs> 2018, and the system was already really established by then. I think when you have um, as large of an organization and, and as complex of a data structure, a number of members and contacts and relationships between contacts and events, then um, it's never been a question on the table just because a change would be so significant. Um, and the, the system meets their needs. I mean, I, I'm under no delusion as far as what the UI experience is. It can look a little dated, <laughs> but that's, that's the engine in the car, right? Is the engine good is, or is it just the paint? <laughs> so, but that's for another conference. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I absolutely would. I work at an agency that we are just as strong Drupal developers as we are Civi CRM developers. And so I think we know the unique power of both systems. I think like any CRM evaluation process, it should come down to what are the needs of your specific organization. And depending on those needs, it could be that there's another CRM tool that's available. I think because we work, um, we work with so many 
membership associations or universities where they want to have that integrated experience. And with the power of the two systems together, there's so much that can be done through the UI, which just lessens the learning curve of what, um, what can be done since a lot of it is configuration based, that that puts a lot on the table. And especially at Drupal Camp, knowing how many fantastic contributed modules there are and even what's in core, to be able to leverage that and have that available for your CRM data as well and have that in one centralized place, I'll take a bad UI <laughs> any day that can be improved over time as far as the flexibility that that provides. But that doesn't mean that that's the solution for everybody. I just know I've seen that, um, the benefit over and over again of that flexibility, that pile of Legos, the open source nature of both platforms represents just that much bigger of a pile of Legos on the floor that we can creatively build what we want. Any other questions? Any other mountain bikers out there? <laughs> Dabble. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks so much. I think um, everyone gets to have 10 extra minutes, or if we, I don't remember, maybe we're actually two minutes and we're right on time. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming.